Hollywood never really ceases to amaze me. It's like there aren't a plethora of examples to pick from when it comes to bad live action adaptations of video games, anime and comics. Dragon Ball, Death Note, that crappy Street Fighter Chun-Li film, the list is endless. They've been making bad adaptations since the dawn of time and yet here we are in 2020 with the same nonsense again. Now to backpedal just a little bit, Cowboy Bebop isn't out yet on Netflix but the news coming out about it doesn't sound great from where I'm sitting. Netflix's Cowboy Bebop series will not be a one-to-one -one adaptation. Faye Valentine's costume is going to be censored. We need to have a real human being wearing that and already, already reading that there's two red flags and we're not even into the story yet. First of all, how many times are Hollywood going to take something that already has a hardcore fan base and start fiddling with it? How about just adapting that original piece of media? That's not to say that changing things can't work sometimes. The first season of The Witcher is really good and it's not exactly like the games, but it definitely works, so it could work. However, if I was to look at the ratio of disasters to success stories, you can understand why I'm a bit concerned. The next part of that that made me shake and scratch my head was the censoring of Faye's outfit. I'm sorry, but who are you making this for again? The fans of the original series or the same people that wanted Snowflake and Safe Space in Marvel, which actually turned out to be nobody. What do you mean that you need a real female to wear that? You mean to tell me that those aren't real women? That this isn't a real woman? Why is it that you'll go on YouTube or you'll watch a TV show like Ellen DeGeneres and and they'll make compilation videos on the internet of guys that are super jacked up like all the Marvel guys like Thor and whatnot. But a woman in something a bit revealing is a problem. I just find it so weird. The double standard is so odd to me in America. Saying something like have a real human being wear that is such an odd thing to say. Again, it just sounds like virtue signaling. As you can see here, they clearly say that it's not going to be a one-to-one -one adaptation. The outfit swap for Faye and less glamorization of smoking. Why? Are you worried this show is going to make people want to smoke? It's fantasy. It's fiction. Jesus Christ. Like seriously, is this the road we're heading down? It might sound really petty, but it always starts with small things and then turns into an avalanche. We've seen it happen before. The article then goes on to say that the series creator for the Netflix adaptation is drawing comparisons from Star Wars and let me just stop you right there. Modern Star Wars is a train wreck, so my alarm bells are already going off crazy right now. He then goes on to say, We ain't playing Bebop, Bebop is playing us. You can't look at Cowboy Bebop and say, well it's just a takeoff." point. We're going to give them different hair and different clothing and we're going to call it something different and it's just sort of going to be a loose thing. If you're doing Cowboy Bebop, you're doing Cowboy Bebop, you know? It's kind of like doing Star Wars. Again, let's hope it's kind of not like Star Wars. It's going to be a seriously messy ride if it is. Grillo also notes here that the show will feature an original narrative but wishes to avoid fans looking at the show and saying that they failed them or failed the original. I'm honestly confused at this whole statement. If you go with an original narrative, then you're inevitably going to upset the original fan base. They want to see the anime adapted on big screen. And obviously not everything that works in an anime is going to work in live action. But a whole new narrative, it seems like a slippery slope to me, but I'm going to reserve complete judgement until afterwards. He then goes on to say that the new narrative will try to tell a broader story of Spike and the Syndicate and everyone else. It's fine if you want to extend the universe in a way that doesn't mess up the original story, but you've got to be really careful with stuff like that. Too many times have we seen our favourite shows taken onto the big screen, only to be left wondering who it was made for. Look at Death Note, a shining example of hot garbage. In this screenshot, the thing I wanted to focus on the most was him saying mature elements of the series will be toned down. Again, why? Who are you making this show for? People came here to watch Cowboy Bebop. A faithful adaptation means adapting all of it, not just removing the parts that tickle your soy sauce the wrong way. Smoking or otherwise. Tell the whole story, keep the characters intact with what people fell in love with. In before they're shocked at the whole fan base not liking their thing. Again, this whole having a real woman fit into the outfit narrative is so ridiculous. I honestly don't get it, but whatever. So I guess we're gonna have to wait and see what happens and see how everything turns out. But what do you guys think about all of this. Do you think they're going to make a mess of it or are you going to reserve judgement until you see it? Let me know in the comment section below. Next up, the CW Network has fired Hartley Sawyer for racist and misogynistic tweets from around six years ago. Now, a lot of the time I can forgive people for the things they say when they're younger. As a matter of fact, I try my best not to judge a person on the stupid things they say in the past because people change a lot on their day to day. Someone's views from six years ago may not necessarily represent them, but dude, it ain't looking good for you. Take a look at the first set of tweets here. 
The first batch, in my opinion, can be forgiven. I think so anyway. They're not good by any means, obviously. Not the worst things in the world though, I guess. He hasn't specifically gone after anyone, they just seem like bad jokes that didn't age well in 2020. It's hard to even know if someone is joking because it's text, you can't actually hear what they're saying or, or the tone they're saying it, but the second set of tweets are yikes worthy. <laughs> I want to say you'll bounce back, but in this day and age, it is not looking good, dude. The first one here, out at a dinner, I can let that one go. Probably a silly inside joke. Even the second one, I could probably let that go. The third one, if I had a wife, I would beat the hell out of her tonight. I mean, dude, what can I even say to that one? That's not a joke, and if it is, it's a really, really bad one. It's a terrible one, actually. But to be fair to him, that could have easily been taken out of context, and I'm sure that's a reply to someone, but whoever went after him chose some special ones, right? Cancel culture in full effect ladies and gentlemen as a lad one of my favorite activities was kid <laughs> i can't even finish reading that someone will make a soundbite out of me in 2030 and i'll get cancelled dude what the hell what were you thinking? Please, someone provide context here. Either your humour is way darker than mine, or you've got some serious psychological issues. <laughs> I don't know man, that's all mad to me. Then there's the last one, the secret boob viewing. I mean, there's already a messy culture surrounding Hollywood and things you shouldn't be doing, so that tweet really doesn't help your case. You really put your foot in it this time. Guys, if he responds on social media, I'll update you, but for now, that's all I've got. What do you guys think? Do you think he should have been cancelled for tweets he made six years? ago do you think we need some real context before action is taken or do you think they're just bad jokes and he should be allowed to return to work let me know in the comment section below next up twitch is once again in the news i swear this company is just non-stop up to something this time it comes in the form of copyright claims over old clips obviously they're referring to streamers and this can be a really really big deal for them twitch has been sending out emails to streamers alleging copyright infringement which has obviously led a ton of twitch streamers to basically lose their minds scramble to delete potentially thousands of clips and countless hours of work. The reason this is happening is because Twitch has extremely lax rules surrounding music. A lot of streamers play music in the background and obviously on a platform like YouTube you'd get done for copyright immediately but on Twitch because the rules are so laid back nobody thought anything of it and it's been that way for eons now at least as long as I can remember. Now imagine having over 100,000 clips and having to sift through them to not get hit with the strikes. Well that's exactly what Twitch streamer Fusil is going to have to do as she has already received two copyright strikes as of 7th of June. She can't even see her old clips to delete them so her channel is pretty much toast at this point. Now to be fair to Twitch, they do have music guidelines laid out but it does go very much ignored. In that regard, it's been the land of the lawless on Twitch and streamers have been allowed to use music unchecked. But now, all of a sudden, out of the complete blue, they've been hit with suspensions and bans. Literally all over the place that like nobody is safe. And for a lot of people, there's no escape in their channel being deleted because there's just too many clips to go through. The other problem is, that if someone plays a song from a game and then that publisher loses the rights to that song, what happens? It's all a mess and Twitch should have enforced these rules properly like YouTube does years ago. There are so many Twitch streamers that are speaking out about it on Twitter and it's a developing situation so we're just going to have to see what happens with this. But if you are a Twitch streamer, just make sure you have all your affairs in order because it could be you next. Let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comment section below. And the last story of the day is a bit of a brief one, but Sony's PS5 show is back on for June 11th which is exciting news but raises one big flag for me. Wasn't the show put on hold because of the Black Lives Matter protests? Well, last time I checked, the protest and all the madness in America is still going on. As a matter of fact, the madness around the world is still going on. Maybe the protest will be done by June 11th, but I doubt it. Wasn't the whole point so that more important voices could be heard? Isn't that, isn't that the message they put out? What happened to that? It's a bit weird if you ask me and probably just goes to show you what I previously said is true. Just seems like a bit of virtue signaling because not going ahead of the show did exactly what? Who did it help? absolutely nobody and it did nothing. If the protests miraculously end in two days then fine, but I highly doubt that. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comment section below. As always guys, keep yourself safe out there, be responsible, and I will catch you all very soon. Peace.